What is going on everyone? It's your guy Cole Jackson back here on Road Graders and we are going to be starting our draft prospect series where I'm probably not going to be doing, you know, the consensus top 50 or whatever. I'm going to be more focusing on prospects that I'm seeing a lot of discussion about, prospects you guys want to see. So obviously drop a comment down below. Uh, let me know who you guys want to see next. But uh, just with limited time, you know, limited resources, we're going to kind of focus some of our deep dives on people of interest. So today we're starting with probably the most polarizing wide receiver in this draft class, and that is wide receiver Keon Coleman out of Florida State University. Someone that has had a ton of chatter about him, um, you know, someone that just kind of had a really interesting combine uh, with some really interesting narratives around it. So I'm really looking forward to addressing all of that and uh, diving into it. So if you guys are looking forward to getting into the draft prospects, hit that like button, hit subscribe if you're new here. I'm going to be having a couple of these coming at you a week along with a couple podcast episodes and that sort of thing. So lots of stuff to get us ready for the NFL draft. And of course, drop a comment down below and let me know not only what you think of Keon Coleman, but if you want someone specifically with a breakdown, put it down. I'll get it on my running list. I'll make sure I'm addressing it. So getting into a little bit of the profile coming out of Florida State University, 12 starts in 2023. It's coming off a season where he had 50 catches on 87 targets, 658 yards, 11 touchdowns, 6.3 yards after the catch per reception. He had a 33.3% contested rate. That is was on that was 10 contested catches on what would that be 33 attempts uh so we'll a little we'll talk about that a little bit more here in a minute only a 3.8 percent drop rate he had two drops he had three drops last year so five drops over two years uh very impressive hands obviously looking good he went eight catches for 257 yards on deep targets of 20 plus transferred to florida state from michigan state and he's also a dual sport recruit where he has a basketball background he also had a bit of a track background but he was recruited to Michigan State also as a basketball player so you guys know I like to highlight uh, that dual sport uh, ability so obviously some really positive things there in the player profile we're going to talk a little bit about the separation about the contested catch rate uh, because that's where this narrative is coming from so I mean he's not an analytics darling if you look at college production um, over the last few years from some of the top prospects he actually has the lowest yards per route run when you compare to some of the previous ones obviously some folks to point out someone like Jalen Rieger um, you know Jahan Dotson uh, Zay actually coming in here so I mean that was more due to um, their type of offense and the quarterback play than it was Zay Flowers um, Drake London's also pretty low too uh, but just really interesting to kind of take a look at that um, he's kind of purple in, in all of the comparative categories uh, and I think that just kind of shows in his lack of production so he's been criticized heavily for his lack of production he's also been criticized heavily for where he ranks with his yards per route run, which we, you know, have already taken a look at, but also his first downs per target. So he's down here, um, interestingly enough, right beside DK Metcalf. Uh, so, you, and, you know, you see Terry McLaurin right here. So it's not necessarily that these mean he's not a good player. I think that'd be a little silly. You know, that's not how I operate when I break down players. Um, but the, the reason I'm showing you guys this is because this is where the narrative around him as a player has come from. It's really around not him not having good analytics, him not having good... Um, um, having a lot of contested catch situations saying he's not getting separation we'll get into that here in a little bit um also wanted to show you guys just kind of where his catches came from you see him down here towards the bottom why am i not able to spot him right here so um you know obviously a lot of his catches coming within the zero behind zero to nine yards um we'll talk about that a little bit here in a second um and what did i put in here career contested percent so Really high contested target percentage, meaning a lot of his targets being contested. That lead talks to or speaks to the separation, but also obviously decently high catch rate on those, um, meaning he can go up and get them. Uh, right beside George Pickens, which I think is a really fun player comparison. Um, so then he goes to the combine and he runs a four six one, but he also had some very very good explosive numbers uh, in the vertical with a thirty eight. Um, inch jump and a broad of 10 7 so obviously very good size so he comes out with a 9 2 3 um, in the raz which is a pretty good raz but we're going to be talking about that 40 yard dash time um, but this is something that i just have to laugh at because 
he ranks it, it just shows so what what they're doing here um is showing the routes he's running in drills and where he ranked in his miles per hour speed. So obviously in the 40, where he didn't run a good time compared to, to his peers, it shows that in the group rank. But then when he's running routes in games where he's actually playing football, he's ranking very high compared to those same people that ran in a straight line much faster than him. So it really speaks to that play speed. And you don't, you can't look at Keon Coleman as a guy where his 40 is going to tell you the story. It's just not his game. And I think this really shows it. So I found that very interesting. You can even see it here specifically on go routes. The only a uh, couple that were ahead of him that uh, are kind of in the same draft here, Brian Thomas and Troy Franklin, uh, guys that are known as deep threats. But then Keon Coleman's not that far off Troy Franklin. So this was actually in uh, Troy Franklin, much, I think he had a 438, 435, 40. So runs the 40 much faster, but when they're running go, go routes, tracking the ball, very comparative miles per hour uh, in the run. So just, again, something interesting to take a look at. And we're going to get into the film now. As you guys know, film doesn't lie. I don't lie. <laughs> I try not to lie. Um, but you cannot judge Keon Coleman off the stats. You can't judge it off some of his testing numbers. You really have to get into the film. When someone says Keon Coleman cannot separate, I disagree. I think that's a very... That take lacks complete nuance. And it, it, honestly, saying someone can separate or not separate lacks nuance no matter who you're talking about, because there's different types of routes. You're running deep routes, short routes, intermediate routes. Are they getting open on all of them? None of them. If you want to look at me dead in the eyes and tell me Keon Coleman does not get open on deep routes, I agree with you. If you tell me he doesn't get open underneath on breaking routes, in breaking, out breaking, slants, hitches, um, I completely disagree with you. And so what I've done is I've gone out, focused my film on that, because I think that's what tells you the story about Keon Coleman. He's not the kind of guy that's going to come in and be that vertical separator. He's going to be the guy that, you know, you want to pair with someone like a Zay Flowers or someone who is more speedy. And this can be, you know, I wouldn't even call him a possession receiver because he's got a little bit more explosiveness. Um, but he's the kind of guy that can come in, play physical, play in contested catch situations, but also blow the doors off people with his route running. So we're going to take a look. I'm going to show you right off the bat some of his deep routes that I grabbed showing where he isn't getting that separation. So you're going to see, and this was pretty common. You're going to get a little bit of a soft shoe. He's corners isolated up top um he's obviously on the top of your screen where the 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 yellow pointer was you're gonna get press situation but instead of getting hands on you're gonna see that soft release so there's that soft shoe release outside leverage and keon coleman on that deep route balls up doesn't isn't able to bring it in and he never really gains true separation a little bit here at the end but i mean not really he's matching him step for step so when people say he's not deep rating you're separating deep completely agree with you here you're going to see nice little cushion about seven yards and he's going to eat it up you're going to get a nice soft release and again corners just going to turn and run with them never able to um separate so again you know those types of those types of commentary on him as a player i completely get it and you know if you look at the quarterback's eyes that's his primary read throughout this whole play he's looking dead at him looking to see if he'll make a play you got the, uh, you can, you know, you had this, the, the soft cushion here and then the corner's just turning and running with them. Uh, the quarterback's going to take a look here before eating the ball. So you see him take a look at his check downs. No way there, they're in man. He's going to end up scrambling, taking off. Now what he does underneath as a route runner, that is where when you're going to say he doesn't separate, I'm just going to prove you wrong right now. Um, and I mean, there was a there was a stat out there about his contested catch slot routes. Um, he's in the slot on this rep. I think it said 44% of his targets out of the slot were contested. Some of these that we're going to take a look at are most certainly not that um, where he's wide open. So you're going to see the first one here. And just absolutely. So a couple things that I like here from what he's able to do. So corner is going to play the sticks here. So he's at about the first down line playing the sticks here. Coleman, rather than just kind of running his curl, he's going to go up and initiate contact against a much, you can see right there with the size difference. He's much bigger. So he's going to initiate contact, move past him a little bit 
and that's going to make the corner run with him. So a little bit of nuance there in the route where he's not going to just go up and curl. He's going to get in there, get physical, try and sell that deep uh, where he's going to run right past him. And you see him and drop that foot right into the ground. As he does, he's going to curl back right into the ball. Ball's coming out and then making a, you know, a catch with contact. So really nuanced run or route there where he's going to work up into the corner not just you know play passive he's going to play physical and you can see nice little separation there enough to make oh it was an incomplete pass Ooh, is that a drop i thought he caught that one that is one of his three drops or two drops this year wow folks that's an interesting one 100 percent from the other round. i thought he caught it that's so funny i was kind of wondering why they did this when I clipped it up, that's too funny. Well, there it is, folks. I was wrong about that. Uh, but still love the physical play. But there's probably, based on the charting, that's 100% a drop. That's right in his hands. He's not getting hit yet. So that's one of his two drops on this play. We found it. Um, that's hilarious. Here we're going to be out of the slot again. And we are going to just, again, play physical ball wide open. He does catch that thank god not making that mistake twice um similar play though he's gonna work right up into the corner he's gonna sell that deep route as soon as he gets him turning you see the corner starting to turn to work up that way foot's planted he's gonna break just run off that it's not he's not gonna be that type of uh smooth uh, like he, he didn't run his three cone he didn't run a shuttle he's not gonna be that smooth operator at six four um but the physical ability here to play off this is what gets him separation and he's wide open right here brings that in it goes over that corner brings it in nice play back in the slot again so love the detail here when he's running this one so he's gonna break out he's got the safety on him so they're gonna be in basically a cover one look here and so he's going to run up at that safety and he's going to sell the seam where he's basically running that, you know, bend in. And then he's going to try and sell the seam because as soon as he does that, the corner is going to turn back this way. So you see, as he runs back that way, now he's got his hips flipped. Now he's going to continue the crosser as he does that, you know, nice little five yards of separation there underneath wide open. So just really good work there. Love the nuance on the route running. Absolutely beautiful. Another one here, terrible throw. So he's gonna come in motion across the formation, line up again in the slot. And we're kind of seeing the same thing. He's going to attack that inside. He's going to run right past that corner, who's again playing the sticks. You can see the sticks right here. So he's playing the sticks. He's going to run right through them and then break out where he's open. And so this was an interesting play. So I'd say that's a good route. I mean, he's wide open. Decent amount of space here. And yet he has to stop and come back in because of where the ball was thrown. And so I'm about 90% sure he dropped this. This isn't a catch, right? So the ball is going to end up falling, almost intercepted. So when we're talking about drops, contested catches, because a lot of folks thought he had drop concerns, do you put this on the wide receiver or on the corner, quarterback? So he's running his route out, and he has to come back across his body and completely extend to try and get that ball. And obviously it's because, you know, pressure's coming. Well, pressure wasn't even coming that bad. You see the guard hit a snatch here. I hate inside snatches from guards. I was actually from the tackle, but it went inside. Um, you know, basically he's jumping, thinking someone's going to hit his foot. Nonetheless, you know, we're taking a look at the route running here. And I think you can see pretty clearly getting open there pretty good pretty smooth running with physicality through these slot corners um getting good separation T definitely not a contested catch merchant here take a look at some of his yak here so again he's getting that soft coverage from lsu he's just going to work this underneath with a slant 
and just go be a playmaker takes that in for six uh so really like this just you know taking advantage of what's there catches it in stride still not the best throw kind of thrown into the back of his body a uh, little bit of a look at the release here because you will have seen when i showed his raz he had a pretty good 10 yard split and you saw you know a lot of explosiveness but not long speed right so you can kind of see that in this rep where he's going to be matched up right at the line of scrimmage in the stack he's going to hit a single up and then just go outside and you can kind of see him separate right away um, with that kind of explosiveness off the line so you can see him kind of blow the doors off obviously with the stack the corner gets in the other corner's way um, but you know you can see him getting a little bit of that separation there and then moving up field obviously don't get me wrong corner interrupts with his teammate there and that creates a little bit of the extra separation but you can also see the explosiveness in his first step <laughs> So now we're going to get into what is the best part of his game, and that's his bully ball mentality, that kind of contested catchability, physicality, all that good stuff. Um, so this one's going to come from the 25. It's going to be into the end zone. So I'm going to call most of these are basically what you'd see in the red zone. Um, this is obviously just outside the red zone, but you know, close enough where we're still getting those end zone targets. So he's just going to go up and get that ball goes up and gets that with one hand. Um, so, you know, there's that lack of separation on a deep ball. And he gets up, playmaker, one hand. That's actually, I think this is the catch that's the thumbnail. He's wearing a red jersey in that. Could have been the thumbnail for this one. Um, so, you know, there's that bully ball physical mentality. 6-4, playing extended, up for that ball. Just a thing of beauty. Um, safety coming over top, too. So basically throwing that into double coverage. But this is just where you're going to trust your guy um, and, and, and go get it. So just a beautiful play there. Did I get the other angle on that one? Yeah, I think I did because you can kind of see it. So there he is. Uh, it's not, I said thrown into double coverage. That's not really thrown into double coverage. Um, but there's that extension, concentration going through. Just an absolutely beautiful play. Uh, so, you know, that kind of summarizes what I think a lot of folks see him as, as a prospect. You know, not going to get a lot of separation on those deep routes. But he's going to get that, you know, get be able to go up and get those catches. And it reminds me a lot of a player this fan base was very interested in. And that's George Pickens, a guy that in the NFL hasn't been getting a lot of separation, but is making those big, tough physical catches and can also play explosive under um, underneath the coverage and with his route running. So here we're going to get another one. This is against LSU. He's got the safety on him, goes up, initiates contact. As the ball comes, he's just going to, you know, push off enough. He's up with two hands, extended, bully ball, 6'4". This one, obviously not a red zone target. That last one was from like the 23-yard line, so similar. It's an end zone target. It's basically a red zone. So there he is going up again. This reminded me of a George Pickens play because it's, you know, just not a lot of separation on the deep route against the corner, but he works through physically when he gets initiated with contact here. You see that? Works through it. Doesn't stop him, tracks the ball well, gets the ball, moving. Then another one against LSU here. Again, initiates contact, locates the ball at the back shoulder, goes up and gets it. So, you know, that's a lot of what I see from Keon Coleman. Uh, you know, we see the sure handedness, minus the play that I 100% when I threw the clip in thought he caught um that was one of his two drops on the year too funny you guys are going to probably give me a hard time in the comments i deserve it that's completely fair uh, but you know you can I, I think this gives you a really good flavor for his game i think you can see the explosiveness in his first couple steps and i mean keep in mind this is a guy that's six foot four you know you kind of see it in his raz where's his raz what do you measure in at oh, six, six three two thirteen so i mean a big heavy player um, but with that, I, I just find this really explains him as a player. You see the 10 yard split, you know, we kind of talked about that in the, in the clip of his release, that 10 yard split was an, uh, a Raz equivalence of 8.74. So very high level, but he's not getting that deep speed showing the explosiveness with his vertical and his broad. So, I mean, I could, I can't find a Raz that explains a player better. He's explosive, but he doesn't have long speed. He's going to be that kind of guy that, you know, those, 10 to 15 yard in breaking routes 
slants, that sort of thing. I think he can be explosive. I think he can get separation. And I think he can make contested catches on those deep routes. He's not going to be the kind of guy that's running wide open down the field all day. If you want that type of guy, you're looking at a Troy Franklin. Um, But then you look at those other guys and you're not going to get the same type of physicality. So it's going to be a little bit of that trade off. Um, So, you know, I, I just find the profile on this one so interesting. Reminds me a ton of George Pickens. Um, little Cortland Sutton in his game, I'd say, though he's not quite as big. Um, Allen Robinson's a guy I've seen him compared to, but just guys that weren't truly elite deep separators, but created explosive plays underneath. And, and that's what I think you have to look at with him. So, you know, if you want to say he doesn't separate deep, I agree with you, but I mean, plenty of clips out there of him separating underneath. And when I say underneath, I don't just mean five yards. I mean, you know, 10, 15 yard in breaking routes, out breaking routes, um, you know, what he can do with slant. So that kind of stuff. So I can't wait to hear from you guys. This is obviously a polarizing prospect. I'm much higher on him than the consensus. I think he's kind of going to be in that wide receiver four to six range you know, maybe five, six, you know, we'll have to kind of dive into a couple more of these guys. Um, but I think comparing him with a guy like Troy Franklin, I think is really interesting because they're just two completely different flavors of player for guys that are similar sizes. One's that kind of two deep, true deep threat that does have some contest catch ability. Um, but I don't think plays nearly as physically as Keon Coleman did, but then, you know, some of the trade-offs there, obviously Keon Coleman isn't able to blow the guy doors off guys deep. So, you know, really want to hear from you guys. Drop a comment down below. If you guys like this breakdown, hit that like button. Let me know who you want to see next. And as always, If you're not subscribed here, hit that subscribe button. Be good to yourselves. Be good to each other. Peace out, everyone.